So Megan, let's let's start with you. I, I love to help women, and this could be that you're pre-six figures, you're at six figures and you've plateaued, or you want to take it to the next level. You know, Megan's, uh, Rebecca's saying 10 million. Whatever your business goal is, this is really about tips to help you get to your breakthrough point faster. It could be six figures or beyond. Um, yeah. So Megan, will you share three tips to, that you can reflect on your business building journey and go, hmm, if I could go back and tell myself then what I know now, what would those top three tips be? Yeah. To break through to six years <clears throat> faster. Sure. I love this. So, so for me, um, what I would say is uh, identify what you're the expert in. So if you, if you are an entrepreneur and you have your own business, you are an expert at something. Uh, and again, you know, the, the more narrow you can make this, the better. So I call myself the earn your worth expert. And I've, I've really identified that through, you know, all the things that I've learned in my business and realizing, okay, you know, it's really essential to own your value so you can earn your worth. So, um, yeah, I'm going to ask you to identify what you are the expert in because you want to be known as the go-to expert in your industry. That is how you're going to stand out in a crowded marketplace. That is how you're going to attract your ideal clients to you because they'll uh, come to you because you have what the, um, you have what they want. And so then the second thing would be, you know, being willing to narrow your, your niche down to, you know, really solving one big problem and working with, one specific type of client that you can uh, fully, uh, you know, transform their life with, uh, you know, the, the service that you're offering or the product that you're offering. And then the third thing would be is to come up with a um, high end, um, high value offer that um, really has a beginning, middle and end that you can teach your client how to solve that problem. And through this process, you're going to be able to, you know, work with your dream clients, really be able to make an impact, transform their lives, show them the map of, of how to get from where they are to where they want to be. So you're working with a lot less people, making a lot more money, but making the biggest transformation possible with just focusing on your area of, of brilliance before we move on to Rebecca, how long yeah. did it take you to figure out these three steps? And again, just recap for people. These are the three tips that Megan has offered and they're really powerful. Yeah. And I totally agree. So I D identify what you're the expert in. And I think a lot of people don't do this because they're afraid to narrow down their niche, which is tip number two, right? Because they go, I want to help everybody. And there's this fear-based mindset. If I niche down, then I'm going to be losing people. And what actually happens when you niche down is that you attract the perfect five star people that you love to work with. And it, and it gives you the ability to create a higher value offer. When you're niche yep. down, you can 10 X the offer because you're so clear on who you're working with and how you're going to do it and what you're an expert in that then the people around, you know, who to bring to you because you're so clear about who it is you work with and what you do and yep. you're able to charge a lot more. So like for you, what would you say, you know, how long did it take you to, figure that out that those three steps yeah so it's interesting because i've been teaching how to create high ticket offers for i think eight years now okay. but it's interesting because it, it really has evolved and add the more i grow and learn my business then i teach that to my clients but now i have a team of folks that help me you know uh to to help my clients and we each focus on our area of, of brilliance because i just want to do the the aspect of it that i absolutely love but one of the things that I want to mention and something that I do, um, I try to do every year is just ask myself the question, how can I make a bigger impact mm -hmm. and, and kind of take a look at my business, take a look at opportunities around me and, and really discern what that looks like. Because it's so aligned with these things that you already offered in terms of tips, because you're yeah. known as an expert in that way. So, so you get those opportunities because you're broadcasting clearly who you are and what you stand for. 
Exactly. And so it's another reason everyone watching, that's why it's so important to do and let go of the fear. And I, I know I get it. It's scary. I, I know I, almost everyone I know who's started a business, they start with that thing of wanting to help everyone. And then they learn over time, like it's important to niche down and get really clear. And sometimes sure. it goes back to that conversation we were having in the beginning where you've got to experiment a little bit and play a little bit to get aligned and get clarity about who it is you love to work with. And so it's going to be dependent on your phase of business. But as quickly as you can, it's smart to narrow down. And if you can start that way, you'll grow a lot faster. So mm -hmm. those are powerful, awesome tips. Okay, Rebecca, your turn. What are three tips to help people what break I through to six figures faster? I love that Megan shared those three because mine are very different, but I love all of hers. And you awesome. need, need way more than three tips, but um, <laughs> you know, mine are, are, okay. So I would say have fun. Nice. Okay. Simple, but I think discovering what is fun for you, and this is something that is so hard, especially for the corporate CEO who's like, excuse me, have fun. They don't realize that when they start having fun, even within their business, outside of business, and their light, their whole life lightens a bit, that their businesses become more um, enjoyable for their employees, um, be more enjoyable for them. And then there are ROI just like, it'll go up, you know, turnover in a company can be a lot lower when people are enjoying going there. As we know, like right now in, I don't know what it's like in the United States, but in Canada right now, young people don't even want to work. It's impossible to find people to go to work because they all want to try being entrepreneurs or they want to go live somewhere else. And they're not really too worried. So I think that if we have fun as CEOs and as owners, um, and I think, you know, the definition of fun, I've been working to redefine it because for me, having more fun is letting go of some control. Having fun is, um, you know, asking the team, what do you think is a good idea right now? I consult with my, um, my operations manager and I say, Hey, what do you think? And he'll, Oh, like you care about my input. Right. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, this will be fun. I don't have to think about it as much. So you tell me what you think and then we'll come to a conclusion. So when I say fun, I don't mean frivolous fun, um, like beer pong on Fridays or something. Like that. <laughs> now, as we know, I mean, really just start to have fun within your business with yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously because you're never going to have it perfect. You know, you're never going to be like a 100 percent ready to launch that offer or program. You're going to make mistakes. The email is going to go out with spelling errors in it. Mm -hmm. You need to just let go of some of that control um, and have fun with yourself, with your with your company, with your family, with the people around you and in your own life. I think incorporating, you know, really who, when's the last time anybody's honestly like, you know, not just had a schedule to meditate, then work out, then, you know, do their business. But when's the last time you actually thought about something that brings you joy and put it into your schedule because it will change the cells in your body. And those are the cells you bring to your business. So I think it's of utmost importance to be enjoying your life. Um, obviously the second would be to find a way to earn passive income. Um, I've been an expert at that. And I think it's because I love having fun. So I can't be having fun and not working all the time i needed to figure out how to make money while i was sleeping and that's what warren buffett said if you don't learn to make money while you're sleeping you will work until you die mm -hmm. so i just decided i don't want to die working in fact i wanted to retire by 45 if not sooner and i've had a banker saying to me even 10 years ago wow you live like you're retired <laughs> so it was just a decision and that that's the really important thing there in that tip make a decision mm -hmm. because once you've made the decision, then you can work towards it. But if you never make the decision to have a free life by a certain age and Robert Kiyosaki talks about that all the time, actually setting a goal, writing it down. If you don't do that, then the universe doesn't know what you want or God doesn't mm -hmm. know what you want. So you've got to claim it. you got to ask for it. Um, so yeah, that would be the second, I guess <laughs> all kind of together, but earn, earn some passive income, figure out how, and then you will have fewer worries about money and you can have more, more freedom of the mind. And the third I would say is 
find a way to stay accountable, especially for those of us we've talked about ADD, we've talked about the squirrel syndrome, uh, shiny object, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, whatever you're chasing, please do it with a coach or with a, an accountability partner, a friend that's also an entrepreneur that gets it. Don't tell your parents. Don't ask them <laughs> their advice because they have no freaking clue what you're trying to do. You know, so you have to have some accountability partners. And, you know, if you ask me, you got to invest in that. You have got to invest financially in yourself before you invest in your business even. Because if you're yes. not in a place for your business to get um, uh, to be successful, if you're not successful on your own, in your own mind, then your business will fail. Mm. Such good tips. Wow, yeah. both of you are bringing it. Okay, so let's re <laughs> let's recap. So have fun. I love this one. I mean, this is definitely one of my main NFA money mantras. It's like, it's about NFA money, NFA joy, NFA flow, NFA abundance. Like, have fun, because what is the point of being alive if you're not having fun? Yes. You know, it's like, hey, I don't want to build a prison out of my business. That's not joyful. So have fun. And, and uh, you know, for those of you who are just hopping on at this point, go back and rewind that and really listen to the tips where you could schedule a time in your calendar to have fun and do things that bring you joy and not have so many to do's all the time. Because remember, our energetic alignment is what brings easier money our way. It's not about working harder. So this yes. is a, a really powerful tip. Have fun. And fun. then second tip from Rebecca is find a way to earn passive income. This is going to give you freedom to where you don't need to worry about money every day. And that even frees up more for, for you to have this acceleration of brainstorm, fun, like fun ideas. This is what I noticed. The easier money gets, the more ideas I have to make easier money. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's wild how it grows on itself. And so this is a, this is a powerful tip as well. And then find a way to stay accountable. So, you know, for a lot of us, this is going to look like having a coach. It could be having uh, an accountability partner. It could be, I think sometimes deck outward verbal declarations are a way to hold yourself accountable. So there's a lot of great tips here.